Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Now, the Rutherglen and Hamilton West by-election is one week away. It is one week today, and in eight days, a week tomorrow, will probably be the last time I ever do a video on Katie Loudon. She's undoubtedly going to lose it, and she knows it, which is why she is desperate. So desperate, in fact, that as a last roll of the political dice, she's basically got on her hands and knees and begged Labour voters to vote for her. They're not going to do it, of course, because why would they? You know, they know they're going to win. But she's got nothing else to offer. She's gone to the ideas covered, uh, cupboard and it is bare. There's nothing there. She doesn't know what to do. She's not very good at what she does anyway. Um, and she can't offer any different or anything that's new or anything that's sort of revolutionary. What she's offering is more of the same and keep on suffering. Well, that isn't what people want. So, uh, yeah, so she's taken this desperate ploy of begging other parties for their votes. Oh, dear, how sad. Soon she will be gone. So we'll take a look at this, see what's going on. But before I do, can I ask, we are getting very close to a target. Um, it would be nice to hit it before the end of the weekend. Uh, and if you're a regular viewer who hasn't yet hit the subscribe button, now's an excellent time. As I say, we are a political channel. We need all the help we get because the YouTube algorithm pushes us down. They don't like politics. So do hit the subscribe button. It absolutely massively helps the channel in the algorithm. And also like the video. That also really helps. Anyway, we'll take a look at this, see what's going on in uh, Katie Loudon's final desperate gambit to get power. Here goes. So SNP's Katie Loudon ignores Skexit as she makes a desperate plea in an open letter to Labour voters after a car crash debate appearance. Well, of course she's going to car crash on every appearance because she can't think on her feet. She's not very bright. And of course, she has to be careful what she says because what SNP policy is, is very unpopular with people. So she cannot, of course, tell the truth. But she's not good enough, not brave enough, not, not brave enough, not brainy enough, not clever enough to lie convincingly and create these lies straight off the top. She has to think and it always comes across bad because you've got someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. Anyway, the Nationalist candidate for Rutherglen and Hamilton West wrote an open letter pleading for Labour voters to send a message to Sir Keir Starmer by voting for her. I, th I think the people of uh, Rutherglen and Hamilton West will be more likely to send a message to Hamza Yousaf by voting for Michael Shanks and Katie Loudon will disappear back to where she was and never be seen of again. And that will be no loss to politics. Uh, the SNP's candidate for a pivotal by-election has pleaded with Labour voters to back her to send a message to Sir Keir Starmer after accusing him of selling off core Labour values. But in her open letter, Katie Loudon failed to mention the main nationalist policy of breaking up the UK because she knows it's a vote loser. Most people in Scotland don't want it. Instead, she wrote that we may not agree on every single issue, <laughs> most issues, I would suggest, alluding to her independence hopes. And it is the final throw of the dice for the SNP who are looking down the barrel of defeat in Rutherglen and Hamilton West. And... They basically are. They know. They know they cannot win. The, the the groundswell of opposition to the SNP, and not just in Rutherglen, it's growing everywhere. Every poll that comes out shows them going down. Um, every poll shows support for independence is falling. They were down to 30-something, 30 38 and a half or 39 the other day. They've never been that low in years. That's how bad it's getting. Because the people in Scotland are looking around and thinking, why is Scotland so bad now? Why is 16 years of SNP got us to this position? And can you trust them if it was an independent Scotland and the SNP were running it and there was no safety net of Westminster? And when you consider 60, and I could not believe this figure when I saw it, 60% of SNP's normal supporters, the men in the street, 60% of them don't actually want full independence. It's no wonder, is it? Anyway, this open letter was branded desperate by some critics who pointed out that if the Nationalists were confident of winning, they would not be begging for votes from Scottish Labour. Her statement came following her car crash performance on Scotland tonight's debate night. 
Uh, Ms Loudon crumbled under questioning by the Scottish Tory candidate Thomas Kerr, who repeatedly asked her what her position was on so, some key issues affecting voters, namely the Glasgow congestion charge, plus income and council tax hikes. And she failed to give a single straight answer, instead shouting about the Tories. Yeah, when they can't answer the question, they moan about something else. No, let's just stick with that, Katie. No, no, no. Let's not worry about what the Tories are going to do. Let's talk about you. You are the one who's likely to come in. What's your view? What's your view? No, no, no. Let's not talk about that. Let's, what's your view? They won't do it. They'll do everything. They'll distract. They'll lie. They'll move on to other things. They won't answer a question because they know. And I say this all, all the time about them. The truth is so damaging to the SNP. They dare not even countenance thinking about the truth, which is why they learn to lie about everything, even things that don't matter, because they have to lie. They never, ever have to accidentally tell the truth in case they accidentally tell the truth about something important. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a U-turn on her previous press statements where she backed all three policies because she'll always follow her party, she said. But she stayed quiet on them during the televised debate. Uh, yeah, we did this thing the other day where she basically said she's not going to listen to her constituents because she's not a constituent MP. She is a apparatchik. She's a party hack. She'll do exactly what the party tell her to do, not what the, uh, the constituents do. Why would you vote for a representative who will not represent you? Weird, isn't it? Uh, Mr Kerr, who's also a Glasgow City Councillor, asked if she supported the congestion charge in Glasgow, which would charge motorists for driving into the city uh, during busy times. But in response, Miss Loudon pointed out that she was a councillor for the region, so this was a, that he was the councillor for the region, so this was a matter for him, and that she was a South Lanarkshire councillor. Yeah, but that still doesn't mean you don't have an opinion on it, does it? Uh, she added, "You're trying, you've got, a, you're trying to ask a gotcha question, and you have the cheek to ask a question of me." when the Tories have cost people in the area millions of pounds. Well, Glasgow City Council's an SNP council, darling. Uh, anyway, she was told that this policy, along with the low emission zone in Glasgow, could hurt families across Rutherglen and Hamilton West, because obviously there'll be a lot of people in that region that work in Glasgow or have to visit uh, hospital, uh, you know, well, hospitals, for example, or relatives, things like that. There's going to be a lot of people going in and they will have to pay. Uh, Miss Loudon was asked twice by both candidates if she supported the council tax rise, but ranted about the Conservatives again. She added, I support a conversation on this because I'm in favour of fair taxation if there is support in place, which there is. But you won't answer the question, will you? Because again, the truth. Can't be admitting the truth. In her letter to Labour voters, she claims that their party's candidate is not up to the task of being a strong MP. I'm saying nothing. You do, psychic, aren't we? You Same thought, same thought. Uh, anyway, um, but she previously told Good Morning Scotland that she would always follow the decisions uh, of her party bosses, uh, which means she's not going to be a strong MP for the region either. She's going to be, like I say, a little a little doer of the, uh, the leader's whims. Scottish Labour's deputy leader, Jackie Bailey, said last night proved once and for all that Katie Loudon cannot be trusted to stand up for the people of Rutherglen and Hamilton West. And while Katie Loudon shamefully sides with her party bosses over their plans to hammer working people through tax rises and congestion charges, Scottish Labour's Michael Shanks is unequivocally on the side of the people of Rutherglen and Hamilton West. From Tory economic chaos to SNP incompetence, the people of Rutherglen and Hamilton West deserve better than the representatives of both of our failing governments. I don't think you're going to worry about that because um, Labour will have this seat. Everybody knows it. She knows it. And she and you can see that she's quite incapable of thinking on her feet because she, like so many in the SNP, is so utterly stupid, devoid of reason, incapable of telling the truth and has no business having any kind of authority. Bye-bye, Katie. You've got a week left and then you've gone and we can all relax and go back about our business. I'm going to come up and we'll finish off. You know, this story has rumbled on a hell of a long time. You have Ferrier, first of all, sort of accused. You have the hearing, you have the vote, she gets suspended. You have the petition, the petition runs for a month. 
Then it's called, you get the announcement that they're going to have a by-election. You have to wait until you find out what the date of the by-election is. Finally, they announce the date of the by-election. You get the candidates up, we're running through. And we're now finally, the last seven days of this absolute drawn out marathon. And at the end of it, Labour will win. And they were going to win from day one. They might just hand them the bloody seat. But you've got to go through all this palaver. But as I say, in a week or so, in eight days, in fact, it will be will be the last time I probably ever write about Katie Loudon. Be the last time anyone ever thinks about Katie Loudon. And off she will disappear into the ether of Scottish local politics, never to be heard of again. Unless, of course, she does something wrong, in which case she'll be back up there and you'll never believe what she's done this time. That happens far too often, doesn't it? Anyway, we'll leave that there. Thank you very much for watching this. Do please hit the subscribe button. As I say, it's very, very important because we're political. We need all the help we can get. And I know there's an awful lot of you, about 63% now of regular viewers who have yet to hit that subscribe button. So really do hit it. It absolutely massively helps. It's something we absolutely rely on you for. So please do. Uh, and definitely like the video. That is another major, major help. Anyway, until next time, stay safe, stay well and... Keep watching this space because next week it's going to be a great result on Friday. Not that I'm pro-Labour, I'm just anti-SNP. Bye.